The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Focus on Texting Throughout the Student Life Cycle. Since we only have one hour and much to cover, we are going to get ahead and get started. My name is Amanda Torelli, Director of Client Success with Mongoose. I have the privilege of partnering closely with our current clients to ensure the success of their texting initiatives. I will serve as your moderator for this afternoon with some help from Dave Marshall. Hey everybody, this is Dave Marshall with Mongoose. Thank you all so, so much for um, coming today. Um, just want to walk through some housekeeping um, that if many of you submitted some really great questions when you signed up uh, for the webinar, we're going to try to get to as many of those as we can. But if there's questions that, that come up during, um, please use the questions area within GoToWebinar. I'm going to be kind of handling the back channel there. So if there's questions that I can answer or panelists, if you want to hop in um, to answer questions and reply to all so that everybody can, can kind of see that, um, that would be great. And last uh, item of housekeeping, um, we are not going to show our product at all today. Um, it's not a, a sales pitch. We just wanted to give an, an opportunity for our clients to um, tell the world wh what they've learned um, with texting um, current students. Um, and so with that, back to Amanda. Thank you, Dave. The agenda for today. First, I will introduce our rock star panel of Mongoose clients. We have three unique representatives that will share their experience using texting, covering topics including planning, best practices, success stories, lessons learned, and the future, what they have on their radar moving forward. Finally, like Dave had mentioned, uh, we will have an, a Q&A closing out our session, so please use the chat feature and go to webinar. Whether you are a current client thinking of leveraging texting in other areas on campus or newly exploring texting at your institution, my hope is that you walk away with a fresh and creative perspective on what the possibilities could look like. With that said, let's meet the panelists. First, we will chat with Dr. Amy Gray, Vice President of Student Success with Aurora University. Amy has been with Aurora for over 20 years, starting out as the Director of Career Services. Her portfolio is quite extensive, now covering everything from academic advising and support, Black student initiatives, career services, counseling services, Disability Resources, and the Wellness Center. Next, we have Carissa Taylor, Administrative Assistant for Student Financial Services at Muskingum University. Carissa has been with Muskingum for over four years and is in the process of completing her master's in psychology. Carissa is what I like to call a power user, quarterbacking all of the communications for her department, which is now mainly texting. Last, but certainly not least, we have Brian Jackson, who will be joining us from McLennan Community College. Brian is the application support specialist and was instrumental in selecting a texting solution for McLennan, which to my knowledge is the largest enterprise setup that we have to date with over 12 departments actively texting their students. So thank you everybody for joining us this afternoon. If I could chime in, uh, a couple people asked, are we going to be recording this? Because I'd rather not um, have to take notes. I'd rather just listen. The answer is absolutely yes. We will be recording, and everybody that registered will be uh, emailed a link afterwards. Perfect. First up, uh, we have Aurora University. A little bit of background before Amy speaks. Aurora joined the Mongoose family in fall of 2016. I've had a blast working with her during the onboarding process and very much admire her hands-on leadership to ensure not only the success of her students, but also the success of her team. So Amy, thank you so much for joining us today. Oops. 
You are on, Amy. Great. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started here. So the first topic that we have planning, um, Amy, please walk us through what your vision was for using texting throughout the student life cycle. Uh, we had really been uh, working pretty hard as an institution to develop better ways to communicate with our students, um, certainly in terms of promoting their success, uh, but definitely also in terms of the types of impact that the that student success can also have on student retention. And we're looking for an alternative uh, from email or phone calls, which um, have a pretty low response rates with students anymore. And, um, and really we, you know, when we, when we found Mongoose, um, it was a pretty intentional um, addition to the services that we offer and the tools that our staff have available. Uh, we are really using Mongoose to message students um, and then, of course, communicate back and forth with their responses um, when, when that message is really can be directly linked to retention. So our initial users were academic advising, financial aid, and student accounts. Um, we have since added career services, residence life, black student initiatives, and the registrar's office, uh, and the text. Uh, you know, we work together to, to um, compose those when they're sort of the larger university group texts uh, and they're designed to help lead the student to take some sort of action. So, um, you know, really it was about finding a way that we can better communicate with our students uh, to help them achieve their greatest success here. Wonderful. Moving on to best practices here, this is a question that occasionally comes up during uh, the onboarding process for me, keeping in mind, again, for our audience that the, the students you're communicating with in particular are current students. How did you determine, Amy, who was going to receive a text message? From the beginning, and, and we continue to operate this way um, even now, all of our students at all sites, including our online students, were automatically opted in. Um, Amanda, you and I, I actually discussed this at length when we were um, first exploring the product and then talking through the onboarding pro process. And um, given the institution's nonprofit status, um, that um, gave us the ability to opt students in without their consent. Um, I can also say I, I went back and kind of looked through some of the um, the data and the records from the past year, and it looks like we had about 10 across all of the departments that are using it that have opted out. Uh, and the way the departments are set up, if, if we have, you know, say six different departments, if a student opts out of texting from one department, they're still active in the other department, so that is 10 across all of those departments. Uh, we have also, um, at least on the advising side, the advisors follow up any students who do submit an opt-out request or reply back to a text with a stop message or something that the advisors will follow up with those students uh, just to confirm that they do want to opt out to let them know that they're really going to only be communicating with them um, important information about their progress and their academic plan. Uh, so we, we try to encourage them not to, but certainly if the student that, you know, says, no thanks, I, I would prefer to not get the messages. Uh, we definitely respect that. Uh, and again, I think that whole strategy to set up multiple departments so that if they opt out of one, they're not opting out of the others. So maybe they don't want to get messages about their, you know, from student accounts, but, um, and they opt out of that, but certainly they might still be interested in getting information from their academic advisor. So I think that that's been a pretty helpful practice as well. Perfect. And for only 10 students opting out across the board, that's fantastic. And I love your strategy there, coaching your advisors to follow up and letting them know specifically how you intend on communicating via texting is extremely important. And I know, Amy, you and I discussed a lot about being intentional, which I'm sure you're going to cover during this segment, but that's fantastic. Okay, next question here. Can you please share with our audience today how text communications are managed campus-wide? 
Sure. This is, is really something that has evolved over the last couple of years. Last year was our first year with Mongoose. So um, I guess technically we celebrated our one-year anniversary on October 1st. I probably should have sent you a gift or something, Amanda. <laughs> um, but um, um, so year one, um, it was just, again, it was just um, academic advising, and I directly oversee them, and um, financial aid and student accounts. And so um, I met regularly with um, the dean and director from those two areas um, so that we could just kind of discuss utilization, um, what kinds of, we were really kind of exploring it a little bit, I think, and, and learning all the different ways that, that we could make Mongoose be the tool that it's become today. Uh, there were Actually, I think it was just me and one other, so I did have a backup in case out of the out of the office. Only two of us had administrator access, um, so folks were really expected to work through me to create any templates that they were going to use to send out to a group of students. Um, so we kept a, a pretty tight, uh, pretty pretty tight reins on it that first year. Uh, year two, now that we're in year two, we have a biweekly youthers group meeting. So we again just kind of meet to say. How are things working or when is there a group text we we don't want three different departments to text all of our freshmen on the same day because we don't want to overload our students it's been such a great tool that uh, we're we're concerned about sort of over texting and having students opt out because they're getting too much so that that meeting provides us with an opportunity to talk a little bit about a calendar we actually have a separate electronic calendar just for when departments are sending out mongoose texts so we can kind of keep an eye on that um, most of the departments now have their own administrator uh, there are a couple of exceptions to that who still work directly with me but most of them um, again as we've all kind of over this first year gotten on the same page in terms of um, when and why and how we're using it um, I've, I've, I've been willing to give more people that access and um, I think really the thing that we were, were most worried about, it, it wasn't so much about our allotment of texts, um, that if we, you know, that we didn't, we didn't even come close to that last year. And honestly, I think we'll have more than enough this year as well. Uh, and if we, we had run out, we had said from the beginning, if we're using it that much, it's, it means that it's working and we will buy, we will just then pay for the additional texts. But it more about so less about using that allotment, but more about over texting and just wanting to make sure that we were being sensitive to how many messages might be showing up on a student's phone that day or that particular week. And uh, so we, we really work together to um, manage that campus wide. Perfect. And having a plan in place or philosophy as far as how you intend to use texting is really key. We always walk through our clients through that process in the onboarding phase of implementing Mongoose. So I'm happy to hear that you have some internal procedures as far as a, a texting calendar, extremely smart. And again, making sure that we're preserving this medium so students don't be, become numb to these notifications. And it sounds like you guys are doing a fantastic job. Yeah, that's been really important. Okay, moving on to success stories. How did texting play a role with student retention initiatives? Yeah, as I said when we started, this was certainly about how can we use, you know, what, where, where's a platform out there that we can use to uh, communicate more regularly and, and more quickly with our students. Uh, and texting seemed to be the obvious way to go, uh, and that was, you know, really designed so that students can be more successful, but student success and student retention are certainly, you know, go hand in hand. Uh, I know I can, I can say that from uh, the fall of 15 um, and there, how many of them persisted to their sophomore year and then the fall of 16 and it would have been the 16 year is when we were using Mongoose, uh, our, uh, uh, freshman retention rate went up over five uh, percentage points, which is, you know, we were really, really excited about. Certainly there are other initiatives that we've used during, that we used during that past year that contributed to that as well, but Mongoose was certainly a part of that. Uh, we have early indicators for this year that, um, 
that we are continuing to see those benefits. Uh, we have, for this year's class, we have more financial aid files complete. We have fewer freshmen with unpaid balances. Uh, we had a greater participation in our first year advising workshops. Uh, so I, I think that there, there, it was, it has definitely been worth, um, it is, it is, it has exceeded our expectations, I should really say, in terms of how it's been able to communicate with students just across the university and on a number of different topics, really. Excellent. If you could please, Amy, describe any notable touch points that texting allowed your staff members to create with their students compared with alternative mediums. Yeah, um, I mean, really, it was these touch points that was the whole point of of getting this, the, getting the texting platform was that the phone and the email and those were not working for us. And we wanted to find ways to develop those relationships with students uh, to be more available to them. Uh, my staff has actually, their business cards now include a texting number uh, so that students know that that's a way that they can get in touch with their advisors. It's provided us with a higher rate of contact. I think uh, if I looked back over last year's data, 99% of the messages sent last year were received. Uh, so we, we had good numbers going in, which I don't, you know, maybe we were lucky to have that, but I didn't have to do a whole lot of um, backfilling with numbers. Uh, and certainly we're, we were able to get those more critical and important messages directly to the student on the timeline that we wanted to. Uh, they were used, the texts were used very intentionally. Uh, again, it was really directly related to retention and personalized to that student. Um, individual messaging, certainly the group texts where, where you're sending out, you know, all of these students that um, um, need to go to the freshman advising workshop, certainly that's helpful in terms of getting that sort of message out to a larger group. But the individual messaging is, has been probably even more valuable with the back and forth of, you know, hey, we talked about you adding this class, but I still don't see it on your schedule. Are you planning on going back in? And then the student will say, here's what didn't work or why they've waited. And so it's been the one-on-one -on -one conversations that have been really valuable. Uh, we still use email for the first go around. So, uh, so for example, when the, you know, when the FAFSA opened a few weeks ago, we didn't send a text to every single student that says, hey, the FAFSA is open. We used our traditional marketing strategies with a poster campaign and email announcements and that sort of thing. Uh, but probably a month in, we will run a report to see how many of our students haven't completed the FAFSA, and then we will start uh, doing more targeted individual outreach for, you know, hey, you need to get online, you need to take care of this. Uh, financial aid, it's really been super valuable, I think, um, obviously, for academic advising and registration as well. Um, and then I, I think it's important to kind of think about how any texting initiatives would co would connect with, with your broader retention strategy. So I can just give one example. We have, uh, we, we ask for faculty and staff volunteers to go into the residence halls and do what we call our knock and talk program. So they go into the halls, knock on the doors. They have a short little survey, um, just a little paper survey. It's, it's pretty um, low tech. Uh, and the faculty and staff go door to door and ask students how things are going. And um, from their responses, kind of we figure out if there's any intervention that is uh, appropriate from there. And so one of them is uh, if they say, yeah, one of my concerns about being able to come back next semester or next year is that I'm concerned about being able to pay for school, uh, that then we, we follow up that next week with a, a scholarship workshop in one of our computer labs. So then the financial aid office gets the list of here's all the students who said I'm a little concerned about paying and I'd be interested in more scholarship information. So then we send them a text that says we're having a sweets and scholarships workshop. So come on in, get a piece of candy and learn about going online to get scholarships. So I think when you can use texting to partner with other uh, retention initiatives and student success initiatives, it can be really um, impactful. I love that. 
piggybacking off of being personal, being intentional and catering your text message to your audience, I asked you to share with me some examples of texting templates that you have created and found effective. Could you walk us through some of these examples, Amy? You bet. Uh, the first one is really, I think, pretty um, pretty self-explanatory, uh, but it's from the advisor to students that maybe, you know, we're a, we're a month away from the fall semester starting, and um, and that certainly wouldn't be the first time they would have text sent a text, but that they say, hey, um, and you can personalize it, so it'll say, hi, you know, Amanda, it's Amy, your academic advisor, uh, and then we just kind of say, what do you need, and please reply. Uh, we're we're um, try to think through whether or not the text is one where we want a response. So if you're going to ask a question or say, please reply, again, that's sort of encouraging the, you know, if it's a question, we're obviously looking for an answer. Uh, some of them are more of just an announcement. So the second one would be a better example of that. That is just housing signups um, is, are the deadlines coming up this Friday? We haven't gotten a contract back from you, and here's a link to the form. So we're not necessarily looking for a response, although certainly sometimes that will happen, <laughs> that a student will say, oh, yeah, I had a question about that, uh, and then they're able to start that conversation. And then we do occasionally use them for events uh, that we don't want this to become the, hey, you're getting six texts a day about all the different things that our student organizations or our Office of Student Activities is sponsoring, um, but we are working very hard on, um, um, we actually just hired, um, this is her second year, a coordinator or a director for Black Student Initiatives um, um, so that we can uh, try to boost retention and graduation rates in that area. And so again, the, then the final one is sort of an example of us trying to get those students um, that it went out to all of our African American freshmen to get them connected um, right off the bat to our Black Student Union. As an example, the um, BSU advisor is also the director of Black Student Initiatives. So whether they joined BSU or not, they were there to kind of make a connection um, with the um, with the director. And so we do, on a much more limited basis, use it to um, announce those kinds of events. Awesome, and these are creative, awesome texting examples here. Again, just being very thoughtful and intentional with your audience here. The last slide that we have for you, Amy, I asked you to brainstorm on your favorite text message here, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is one of your first messages that you sent out. Walk us through this text here. It was our very first one, and I can remember sort of, you know, holding my finger over the clicking the send button for a while <laughs> because it went to all students. So, of course, I didn't try to test it on a, something that went to 10 students. I tested it on something that went to 3,000 students. Um, but we had just opened our Welcome Center, and this, the president last year uh, decided that she wanted to host um, – Really what we've called them are just sort of little pop-up events around campus. And so this was our first pop-up event last year. And it went out uh, the, went out on Monday for an event that was held on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, we had uh, over 700 students come through on those two days. And for most of them, it was the first time they'd been inside the Welcome Center. So it was a great way to... Um, you know, to kind of showcase uh, that new facility. And uh, certainly I think that this is an example of when you would want to announce an event using a text that our president was there. And really she, it was, it was her event. She is very accessible to our students. She is very visible. And it was an opportunity to come and tell her how things are going and chat a little bit about what your A experience has been like. And, uh, and so that one was, um, it was fun to send because it was our first one, and then it was a fun event that was really super successful. Excellent. And I'm pretty sure I saw some emojis flooding back and some hand claps oh, yes. and thumbs ups. Oh, yes. It was, yeah, that was, that, it was really fun. Uh, we get a lot of, uh, yeah, the, you, I was surprised by the types of responses that I got from students, but they were all very, um, very positive and very friendly. I just thought it was, um, you know, just it was really nice to see them wanting to kind of engage back with some would write back and, and, and apologize that they weren't able to attend because they were, you know, student teaching or doing their internship or something. And um, so very conscientious about it. Excellent. 
Well, that wraps up our segment for Aurora University. Amy, thank you so much for your time. We will put you here on hold until we open up for Q&A. Next, we have Muskingum University. Uh, Muskingum also joined Mongoose in fall of 2016. I'm super excited to have Carissa share how she has been leveraging texting specifically within financial services, as there is a growing need to really ensure students are receiving timely updates that can sometimes be missed or overlooked in the shuffle of email and phone calls. So very excited to have Carissa speak with us today. Welcome. Hello, everyone. All right, mm -hmm. same format we'll follow here. We'll dive into planning. So the first question that I have for you today, Carissa, please walk us through how you determined what topics were text appropriate. When we were looking through our typical correspondence that we use uh, throughout the year for financial aid and the information that we share, um, Really, we decided that we were going to focus on things that were quick and easy, more informative things, more informative things than necessarily us needing a response back via text. So, I'm, I'm ready for the next one. Thank you. Um, so, a lot of the text messages that we sent were student loan information that we needed. So. We need you to complete your master promissory note or your entrance counseling for your federal student loans. Um, for our institutional loans, we would send out texts. Um, please complete your master promissory notes for those. Uh, we also send out uh, the 14 day right to refusal for their federal loans. For missing FAFSA information, it was, we catered it kind of to a point of you've been accepted to Muskingum University. We still haven't received your FAFSA yet. If you're interested in sending us your FAFSA, here's our federal school code, things like that. For returning students, it was very similar. You, we haven't received your FAFSA yet. Please make sure that you do so, so you can receive your federal financial aid. Um, and then more specifically, you or your parent did not sign the FAFSA. And then we would include information on how to do so. I specifically in our office take care of the verification process for the FAFSA. So with our process that we send out, I love the fact that we were able to send a quick text to people um, with a link to our website where we have the PDF forms of our verification worksheets. And then I would also give them brief information on the tax and income information that was needed. For the other text, we did, um, things for like the teach grant so the need your agreement to serve things like that we have something that we have it's called musky preview it's our new student orientation we have something there for financial aid in our business office that's called money matters and if the student the incoming freshman wasn't able to attend the must the musky preview or the money matters event then i would make sure that i would text them a link to the pdf form of the information that they missed so that way they still had all the information that they needed. Um, it was also along the same lines of the selective service for the gentlemen who haven't registered for their selective service yet. And if they wanted to receive their, their federal money, then they needed to make sure that they completed that. We try to make it so that it's not all we need, need, need. So we try not to sound so needy. So we try to give a little bit more information um, kind of a give type of thing. So we send out something that we refer to as our warm and fuzzy text. So we have three financial aid counselors in our office and each one gets their own portion of the alphabet. So one of our counselors who handles A through E, all of the incoming, all of the prospective students that uh, we would send out this text and say, hey, I'm Amy, I'm your financial aid counselor. Looking forward to you know, meeting you, things like that, just kind of some brief information. So we call that the warm and fuzzy. So, and we also send out um, just brief little texts about student financial service events that we have on campus as well. Hey, Carissa, this is Dave Marshall. We had one comment come in saying that it was a little bit um, hard to hear you. So maybe if you can try to speak a little oh. bit louder, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, is this better? Well, we'll have to wait for the <laughs> feedback. Sounds good to us, okay. Carissa. Okay, all right, sorry. Thank you. So those are types of text messages that you sent. 
What about information that you did not send via text message? Walk us through some examples here. Okay, so we wanted to keep it to where it wasn't a conflict that we were sending, you know, we, nothing that, we wanted to keep it kind of happy or neutral things that we were sending. So we don't send out any exit information, but that's due to the regulations. We feel, we feel more comfortable sending the actual physical papers um, as well as the pamphlets that go with it. We don't send any um, satisfactory academic progress information over text. That's just too lengthy on the information that we would even need to have on there. And any kind of formal correspondence of anything that we, that we ourselves personally wouldn't want to receive via text academically or money-wise, we don't want to send it that way. Personally, in our office, we do not send information directly to the parents unless the student specifically asks us to continue that co correspondence with the parent. Because a lot of students are, oh, I don't know that, here's my mom's number, here's their number, so on and so forth. So, but we try to keep the information directly to the students. Great insights here. During our preparation, Carissa, I asked you to brainstorm on how Mongoose and texting has affected your overall communications plan. Can you please walk our audience through today how texting has shifted your overall correspondence with your students? Mongoose has allowed us to, our, has allowed a lot of our, the process that we have on communication to be a lot quicker. And which is nice. So like with our Muskie preview information before, if they missed the Muskie preview, we would send a letter. Now I can just send them a, send the group of students that missed. I can just send them a text and they'll go straight, you know, to the PDF on our website. Same with selective service. It was a letter and then we would send a postcard home. The we'll send a letter first. So that way it's the official correspondence. And then after that, we'll say through text, Hey, you still haven't completed your, selective service. Same with the no FAFSA before it was letter and postcards and just a whole lot of mail and now we've simplified it down just to text. Um, with the no MPN and the entrance it was the same thing, letter, postcard, now it's just a simple text. With verification it's a little bit trickier because it is a, a federal thing that has to do with the FAFSA. I do send an official letter first, then I do text and from that point forward with throwing in a couple emails and just just for fun um, for the verification for our adult program Muskingum actually has something that we call the Muskingum adult program because they're not actually on campus we would send them emails now the first correspondence is text and then we send an email with more details and then text and then email and back and forth until they respond same with um, the warm and fuzzy was always an email that went out now it's a text general um, correspondence before we were using email and phone calls and letters now we're using text and emails it's nice to have proof of those conversations whether they're texting or they're emails it's nice to be able to have that to put in their file so that way we can refer to it later wonderful looks like texting has same, saved some trees here and some paper <laughs> absolutely <laughs> All right, shifting on to some best practices here. To what extent do you promote texting as a service to your students? What we do is, I personally, when I talk to a lot of students and their parents, I use it as a another personal aspect that we're able to use to the students. You know, we're catering this to you. So usually it ends up like, hey, do you have a question? You can text me. Um, some of the parents when they come in they need help with the parent plus loan or the the private loans or things like that same with the students with their master promissory notes and their entrance counseling and a lot of them they don't have time to do it when they're right in our office so i usually write it out on my business card and give it to them what my mongoose number is i don't tell them that it's my mongoose number i just tell them that it's that they can text me on this line they don't know that I have the app on my phone, the Mongoose app. So when they text me after hours or on the weekend and I'm able to reply back to them, 
they feel like they're being, it's more of a personal aspect. They feel like, hey, this person really cares about me and this person is able after hours and on the weekend is still able, still wants to get back to me to help me. And it's just that little bit of an extra step, little bit of an of extra caring that helps a lot of our families and our students. A nice personal touch for sure. Okay, next question here, moving on. How do you deter, or how do you target, Carissa, the students you want to text? And you can perhaps explain your process internally or even inside the texting platform with Mongoose. What I use a lot of in Mongoose is creating the segments and the templates based on what criteria we use. I probably use segments and te templates 95% of the time when I'm texting. It's usually to a larger group of students um, compared to like an individual text. So based on the certain criteria, if they need their NPN in their entrance, I have a segment for that. If they just need their entrance or they just need their NPN. So that way it, it helps to alleviate a lot of the problems and the, and it just, it can get really convoluted with a lot of the letters and things like that. And the segments and the templates allows it to be quick and easy. And it takes a lot less time to get those out. Perfect. And with taking a look at the success of, of text messaging in general, what, what kind of reports or statistics do you take a look at or how do you determine texting was successful for you? We measure the success rate on the response rate on specific items. So if I send a, hey, you need to complete your master promissory note and your entrance counseling text to 150 incoming students, and the next morning when I come in, I have a list of 20 students' names on my desk that completed it. I call that pretty successful. Awesome. In my opinion. <laughs> yes, for sure. What, what additional wins have you identified since using Text to Carissa, perhaps from a student's perspective or a staff perspective? What else can you share with our audience today with how texting has helped you? My favorite part of having Mongoose is the fact that our move-in day has become so much more successful, has become so much more simpler. Just the aspect of texting for the MPN, the entrance, the selective service, the verification items that are needed. We spend a lot less time on our problem children. And so when we have our move-in day, our students have something that's called a passport. So before they're able to finish their check-in on move-in day, they have to get initials from certain departments that need information. So if student life needs something or financial aid or the business office, things like that. So it's nice to see a lot of, a lot less people have to come and see us and they get to go to their rooms earlier and meet their, and see their roommates again and things like that. And, and that's just, that's a huge win for us. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Carissa, for spending some time with us this afternoon. Uh, we're going to move forward uh, with Brian here. We'll have you on hold and reconvene for Q&A. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, next we have McLennan Community College. McLennan joined Mongoose spring of this year and dived right into an enterprise implementation with Mongoose. I believe Brian offers a unique perspective on the support side of things as he manages over 30 staff members and 12 different departments that are actively texting both prospective and current students. So he's a busy, busy man. Brian, welcome. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing great. So we'll dive right into planning phase here. Please walk us through, Brian, what kind of preparation and planning transpired before an enterprise rollout was executed? Well, um, when we decided to go with a texting application for our campus, the reason why we decided to do that is because we noticed that students wasn't really reading or um, opening up their email and answering back. So we decided to be more modern in 2017, 
and go with a text application. Now, Mongoose wasn't the first one we went to. We um, tried out other texting companies, but they didn't measure up the part after the demo. And Excuse me, Brian, real quick. Don't mean to cut you off here. If you could increase your volume a little bit, we're having a hard time hearing you. Okay. Um, can you hear me now? No. It's a little bit louder. No, a little louder, please. Okay. Hold on just a minute. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Way, way better. <laughs> Thank <Okay>. you. Thank <laughs> you. Not a problem. No, what I was saying was um, when we decided to go with a texting application, um, we noticed that students wasn't reading their emails or answering them the way we was expecting them to. And so we wanted to reach our student body a lot more and more efficiently. So when we decided to go with a texting, Mongoose wasn't the first. Um, we went with other, we checked out other companies and they just didn't measure up the part um, at the demoing and checking it out and the resources they had available. So when we stepped on board with Mongoose, it was like a dream come true um, from the implicate just getting it going to the contract to just the training um, me and the director of IT and the president of student success all sat down and met and decided how we wanted to move forward with this and Mongoose was very much um, hands-on with us they had several trainings with us as far as not only for administrators but for users and helped us through every step and answer any question we may have Excellent. With this planning, how did you determine what departments would use Mongoose? <laughs> um, our culture here at McLennan Community College is a culture that is used to customizing and having their own thing. And so when we first decided to go with Mongoose, the idea was admissions, recruiting, and advising because they touch our potential um, future and current students. And so um, once we got that implicated into our campus, then the other departments were so on board as far as, well, what is this that you're using? We would like to use this and <laughs> how can we be a part of it? And so it just grew just very much on our campus. And so it's even growing even further as we speak. Awesome. So once a few folks got on board here, it kind of caught fire on campus, it sounds. Yes. Now, we still did have users that are from a different generation that did not catch on the texting as quickly as others, but now they're using it um, better than we are at times. Awesome. So jumping into some best practices here, can you please explain with our audience how, with all these students and active departments that are texting, how do you manage their specific texting preference and perhaps even go as far as sharing how mobile information is collected? Well, each department targets a different cohort of students. So you have departments that, like I said, targets your potential students, you have your target current students and then so forth. We have a um, reporting application that is called Informer that we collect the data as far as what we put into Mongoose as far as contacting students. The One of the biggest questions we had when we decided to go with Mongoose and then texting students was how do we get student numbers? Because a lot of times when students are filling out their Apply Texas application or coming into our college, they give us, some give us correct numbers and some give us numbers that are not correct or are no longer in service. So we decided to um, have students go in doing registration time and update their emergency contact information and their current and validate that their current address and phone number is correct and provide a mobile number. Once we did that, then we have a tool that pulls from our database that collects current student cell numbers and then their ID numbers and first name and last name, and we import that into Mongoose. And our administrators from each department 
manages those. Now, when they can't handle it, then they come to me in the IT department and I update those students' information or bring in those um, numbers so that they can be correct in each cohort of different departments that we have. Beautiful. And that's one of the benefits of, of having an enterprise platform, being able to kind of customize that information that would be valuable to your end user. So a user, let's say in admissions, will probably want to see completely different information as opposed to an advisor within student success. And it sounds like you have been creating a really good relationship and, and process internally with Mongoose and on your side to ensure that they do have accurate student data. Yes. Okay. With that being said, um, do you provide custom fields? Well, we just kind of talked about this a little bit, but um, mm -hmm. perhaps you want to go in more detail as to what that information looks like for your departments. Well, give an example recruiting. Recruiting create a custom field for their um, department as far as how they want to reach students. Are they set up segments with um, text already kind of pre-written up where they can just insert, you know, the name of the student or the name of the employee that is reaching out to those students compared to um, advising who are touching bases with our current students who are setting up appointments for, hey, you know, let's be advised for the spring 2018 semester. Um, hey, you know, um, come in and let's set up an appointment so that we can make sure all of the documents and things that you need are in place to register or um, you haven't completed connections or orientation, so let's come in and set those up. Perfect. Now, with having such a large team, um, having these awesome communications back and forth, I ask you to do a quick assessment and come up with some conversations that you thought were a success and you passed along these two conversations, if you don't mind, Brian, walking us through here, these examples that you're sharing with us today. Yes, this is from our advising department and they reach out to the students um, that they are either have advised or will advise. So each advisor has a group of students that they work with, um, that they divide up so they don't just be unorganized. And so um, with that being said, this is Kayla. She's one of our advisors. They reached out to Tyler and setting up an appointment for the registration that's opening up very soon. Awesome. And one of the keys here, you can see the back and forth dialogue. We tend to find that the um, more conversations that are happening or transpiring via text back and forth, the more that we find the student is engaged throughout the process. And we see the same example here. If you'd like to walk us through what looks like more of the student actually proactively reaching out to your uh, counselor here. Could you walk us through this example, Brian? Yes, this is like you brought out is the student reaching out. Once students found out that we had a texting application, they were thrilled. Mm -hmm. And so they have been using this um, every day or all the time as they can. So this student reached out to the advisor. This is one of our students that is ahead of the game. Um, they wanted to um, let the advisor know about their schedule and how could they work in um, meeting with the advisor to setting up their classes. Awesome. And this is something you can expect as you start to promote your texting phone number, you know, text or call, list your mongoose phone number. You will have students proactively reach out to you or at least open that door. So if something else comes up down the road, they have your contact save in their phone. They can text or call you if you have any questions. And this is a prime example here. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Ryan, for your time. Uh, we're getting close here to the top of the hour, so I'm just going to ask one panelist to take each topic that we have here before we get to a Q&A. Lessons learned. Amy, I'm going to ask you to take this one here. Is there any advice that you can share with our audience today or aha moments or wisdom that you'd like to bestow on anybody that's considering texting moving forward? Yes, for me. Oh, um, wow. oh, this is for Amy. Sorry, you're oh. you're unmuted, Amy. Okay, thanks. 
Um, yeah, I would say it's really important to coordinate across campus. So make sure you're getting sort of all those folks around the table and talking about, you know, how and in what sort of circumstances you will be using it. Uh, I, I learned I learned through. Uh, trial and error that you always want to say when you're starting a, a, a text conversation with someone in that initial text uh, that you need to identify who you are or you will get a whole bunch of replies with people asking, who is this? Um, <laughs> and then in the department, it, 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 when you go to set up the individual de departments to be thoughtful about whether or not you will be assigning a staff um, to each student in that department or not, certainly that can be really helpful when you're doing that one-on-one -on -one outreach, like with a financial aid counselor assigned to the student or an academic advisor assigned to the student. But it also means that in that department, only the people who are assigned to those students can be texting with them. So um, having administrator access can override some of that. Um, but I would just say be really intentional in determining um, how and when you're going to associate certain staff members with students. Perfect. And and the best is when a student sends back an eye emoji, who is this? So Oh yeah. <laughs> be very thoughtful that you're saying, Hi Amanda, this is so and so from XYZ department or XYZ institution. It sounds very simple, but it does make a difference in how the students respond. So um, very good wisdom here. We're gonna transition well, Oh, if I could just tag on to that real quick, one of the things we learned as we were sitting around in a group is that you can get really um, territorial about your 160 characters. And so folks would want to take out the, but it takes up too much space to say this is so and so from the academic advising. But we, you need, otherwise you're going to end up using text back and forth anyway when they say who is this. So I do think for at least that, in, you know, each time you start a conversation, trail with a student, you need to say who you are. Absolutely. The next topic here, and, and Brian, feel free to take this one. Sorry about the confusion there. Any exciting things you have on the docket in the next six months, Mongoose related, as to how you plan on enhancing student communication? Yes, um, right now, Mongoose is being used with our staff, but in the future, we're planning on opening this up to our faculty. Faculty is very excited about getting their hands on this tool. So um, that is the next step that we're looking forward to. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We, we promised we would save some time for some questions, so we're going to transition, and Dave's going to assist me now with an open Q&A. Okay, uh, Brian, this one's for you. Um, Sandy asked, how, how do you obtain phone numbers from prospective students? Well, through WebAdvisor, we can set up different parameters where if a student log in, then it reroutes them to a page within WebAdvisor to update um, their contact, emergency contact, phone numbers, um, name, and all that type of stuff. Okay, and I'll and I'll add to that. I've seen other clients, you know, make sure that you're asking for mobile number on your inquiry form and m mobile number on your application, campus visit request form, all all of those places too. Okay, um, this question is for Amy. Amy, since adding text messaging to you com to your communication, have you eliminated more emails, letters, phone calls from your communication plans? Yeah, I definitely think um, fewer emails and phone calls. Uh, we, we do still, when appropriate and when it's some sort of formal notice that, that it occasionally is more appropriate for um, a letter to go out, uh, but the emails, there may still be the initial announcement, but it used to be sort of then follow up with another email, follow up with another email, follow up with another email, and now we can just get it, we, we get it done and send them a text and it's, um, and and that's where the students, you know, that's, that's how they want to communicate. Okay. Um, question for any of the panelists, um, how does your college handle the cost? Do you have students pay a fee that covers it? At McClendon Community College, we don't. It's free to students. Same, Same with AU. Yep. Okay. There's one question that came in that I'll answer. Um, does the system track if the texts were read 
And um, there's actually a, a blog post on our site right now that talks about metrics that matter. Um, unlike email, in the U.S. and Canada, you are unable to track um, reads when it, it comes to a text. So the post that, that we put up there offers other metrics that might be more valuable. Um, back to Amy. Um, Raphael asked, how are you capt capturing initial opt-in from students? It's part of the application. And so once once that information um, is is loaded, the cell phone information is loaded, um, I believe it's actually both on the application and then also on our registration forms. So if a student even changed their um, you know, their cell phone number, they could change it on their next registration form, they could contact the registrar directly, but that information was already accessible um, to us in WebAdvisor and in Colleague, we're in a Lucian school, uh, when we started doing the texting. Great, and um, for any of the panelists, do you have any best practices for online or non-traditional students? Um, or, I will say, oh, so go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, Amy, you're good, you're good. Yeah, we are actually just uh, just recently. It sort of, um, I think Brian, you talked a little bit about this too. That word, you know, as word spread about this service, more and more departments wanted to get in on it. I just got a call on Monday that said from our um, adult degree completion program, which are are largely our adult students, and um, our online students um, are often taking those courses as well, and they. We, I will be setting them up next week. So, although honestly, I don't know that the communication is different. I, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't anticipate that being any sort of different sort of prep or composition or utilization than we would for any other student because it is always about here's what you, you know, like you, you batch, if you're doing individually a text. Um, it's always specific to that student, and if it's a, some sort of batch text, you are you are collect you are creating that batch to that audience. So, an online or an adult student wouldn't be getting something that maybe was going to all of your traditional undergraduates. Um, but if it was something about hey, you need to file the FAFSA, you know that goes to everybody. So you can really batch them so that it 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 reflects who needs to get it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, one thing I did want to note, we in the handouts part of GoToWebinar, I uploaded a Word document that is a texting policy template that you that you could use at your school. Um, last question, because I want to I want to um, respect everybody's schedule, and I really like this question: Did anyone receive pushback from any managers in various departments? If so, how did you win them over? <laughs> I can answer their question. Yes, we did. Um, we had some departments that wasn't really on board with the texting. So that's where I came in with Charisma <laughs> and mm -hmm. showed them how how our whole objective is to reach the students. And our culture of the students is students from this decade. Students from this decade are students that are always on their phone. They're always texting, using all kind of different measures to text. They don't really talk or call or use voicemail as much. So to reach the students that we're trying to, text messaging is the best practice. And looking at the data that we pulled, we saw that. So those ones that were not as on board once they saw the data and then once they got their hands on Mongoose and started seeing the, seeing the feedback from students, then, like I said, they are texting more than the ones that were on board from the jump. Excellent. That's great feedback. Well, we want to thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. Bravo to our, our panelists. If I could send it out a clapping emoji, I would do that right now. We will <laughs> have a recording of this session provided to everybody that attended today. If you have any questions, feel free to follow up. Have a wonderful rest of your week and take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone.